Well, hello everyone. Good morning. Sunday, Sunday morning. Uh, my name is Alex Kislov. I am the new campaign associate at the B Russian Jewish Division. Uh, first, I want to welcome you all and thank you for joining us today for our Tikkun Fellowship course, Hacking Into Your Family Secrets, Genealogy Research for Busy Jews, led by none other than Alexander, a good friend with a great name. Little fun fact, I myself was also a Tikkun Fellow participant in 2015, and so for me it's very special and I couldn't be any more proud to welcome today's fellowship initiative. I um, wanted to remind everybody the Russian Jewish Division of the Jewish United Fund engages the Russian-speaking Jewish community in the Chicagoland area with a focus on outreach to young professionals and young families in the areas of leadership development, community engagement, and charitable giving. Our programs are made possible with the generous support of Genesis Philanthropy Group. And now, without further ado, I want to present to you our 2021 Tikkun Fellow, Alexander Goodfriend. Thank you, Alex. Great to have the same name with you. Yes, Let me, great name. <laughs> let me, uh, uh, first of all, uh, make sure that everybody can hear me fine. If I'm speaking too loud, please uh, let speak up now or later. Okay, uh, so first of all, a word to uh, thank the sponsors. Uh, so uh, this is a, a project, a fellowship sponsored by the JUF Russian Jewish Division, the Genesis Philanthropy Group. And uh, thanks to these sponsors, we can do something uh, very special for genealogy. Um, I can, sh those sponsors, um, funds went to open up some genealogy databases. Uh, so thanks to the fellowship, I purchased subscriptions to the systems like Ancestry.com, uh, JewishGen.com, and I can share access to the systems, which will enable you to do your own genealogy research much more effectively with access to, to these systems. Uh, we also are able to sponsor uh, DNA testing only for people who are interested, um, and that is going to be also funded by the fellowship. Uh, for details about all what I mentioned, you can talk to me a little bit uh, later you know, after this presentation. Uh, in fact, I think I'm planning uh, to spend a lot of time in Q and A, so we can even talk about this in the kind of a Q and A part of the presentation. Uh, <clears throat> so here's the outline of what I'm going to tell you about. Uh, I would like to tell you about why do genealogy now, um, why do genealogy in general, and why do, do genealogy. Now? I'll tell you about my story, my personal journey. Um, and I think that perhaps um, my story is not too different from the story that you have in your family. And what drive, drove my project is something that uh, is not too different from what might drive you to do your own genealogy research. Lastly, I'll tell you about how do you build your own family tree. And the steps are reporting, interviewing, going to the databases, and finally doing the DNA analysis. So to answer in a, in a simple answer, in a simple way, why do genealogy and why do it now? Um, genealogy have changed, has changed fundamentally in the last 10 years. Uh, you know, of course, everybody did genealogy uh, from time immemorial, but in the last 10 years, something really special happened, which is, uh, in the last 10 years, incredibly powerful and rich online databases have been created. And thanks to the databases, yeah, within a few, with a few clicks, you can discover a lot about your family history, information that you might have not imagined was even available. Not only that, uh, we now are in the era of collaborative genealogy where people are building genealogy and they're matching their family trees with other people's family trees. And through this kind of collaborative Wikipedia type of effort, uh, incredible amount of genealogy data is now available, something that no generation you know, before had access to. So that's why now, because now is probably the most exciting area of, era of genealogy that ever existed. So let me tell you by my story, what drove me to actually go into this. 
So, you know, I, my profession is data. I'm a data scientist and I'm a researcher. Uh, so I love organizing data. I love finding data sources. Um, and uh, two years ago, I found myself in a situation where I heard so many stories, uh, so many tales. I had, I had records. I had photo albums. But nothing was really organized. Huh. You know, looking at a picture and saying that this is Uncle Moses from, from 1905 is just a data point. Uh, how does it all fit together? I didn't have a picture in my mind where I could say, ah, so this is how it all connects. <clears throat> so by doing the genealogy research, I was able to kind of organize the information for myself and really be able to create a story about uh, my history, the history of my family. And this is a story that I would like to pass on to my children, to tell them about the story of their family in a coherent way. Uh, connect the dots, connect the photo albums, the family trees, and so forth. So, uh, so this is, I think, uh, something that drove me uh, big time. But secondly, I was also getting ready for a, for a wedding. And when you're getting ready to, for a wedding, you're going to meet your in-laws, and everybody's going to be asking about everybody else's family. Who is this? Who is this person? Uh, and what is your family's story? So it's really great to be able to share stories and 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 you know uh, brag a little bit maybe, or or just uh, or just share interesting stories about your family. Yeah. So the wedding is something that certainly uh, drove my story. Um, I also heard a lot about the war, the Minsk ghetto, where a lot of family died. Uh, so. I thought that I would like to understand this more and I get, get into the Yad Vashem archives, get into all the information I can get in order to figure out exactly what happened, who died, under what circumstances. And in some sense, building my own genealogy allowed me to connect in a very personal way with the Holocaust. Um, and I mentioned to you, of course, that the, you know, the online sources are just too tempting. I mean, if you knew that Google existed, would you, would, wouldn't you go and check it out? So similarly, you know, there are incredible data sources available online now, which would give you answers to questions that you always wondered about. Uh, and they're available now for free. Uh, and so why not tap into them? So let's dive into this. And let's, let's figure out how do you actually go about building your own genealogy. Uh, so uh, in my conception, there are four steps to building your own genealogy. The first step, the building your genealogy is basically enter information yourself, uh, uh, about yourself, and about your known family members. So the, the father, mother, the, the grandparent, the grandparent, the grandparent, the grandparent, then go into uncles and aunts and siblings and their, and their parents, siblings, and so forth, until you basically map out the stuff that you remember off the top of your head. Uh, so you to do this, and you will see a slide, to do this, you will basically do either online software or an offline software you install on your computer. Many good ways of doing it. Um, uh, you can also tap into some of the notebooks and records and albums that you have in your possession and, and, and you know, uh, upload pictures or uh, record some of the pictures, names, uh, the stuff you might discover. The next step would be to interview family members, and that could be a uh, some of the uncles, some of the great uncles, some of the people on, on distant part of the family tree, having those conversations will fill in a lot of gaps and give you a lot of context, uh, which is kind of quite remarkable and very special. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Maybe another conversation with grandma would be helpful if she's available. Unfortunately, sometimes it's hard to you know, some of the people you want to talk to are deceased and it's, it's a shame. And so you have to find some ways of getting to the information other ways. But the last part would be uh, uh, searching the databases and then what could be called the extended projects. So searching the databases is, is incredibly easy and, and uh, uh, it's really not too different from Google or another online search. The extended project could include uh, other things. Uh, so you can run a DNA test you can join a special interest group that focuses on a particular town's history, a particular you know, group of people, a particular story. Uh, 
Um, and then lastly, you can hire a local researcher who will actually unlock some of the databases that are not online. And that's, that's a very important bit that I have not done myself, but a lot of people have done with a lot, a lot of a very successful. So let me now uh, go through all the steps and tell you a little bit about the pitfalls and share some tips. Uh, so tips for entering data. So uh, there are two basic options, uh, doing it online or doing it offline. So a very popular database for Jewish data is genie.com. Uh, it's, it's, fr it's free uh, slash freemium. So uh, entering data is, is completely free. Uh, uh, the premium part is actually doing uh, match, making matches between information that you enter and information that other people enter, maybe from different family trees. Um, yeah. So you go to genie.com and you basically start building a tree. Uh, in my case, somebody has already put me on his tree, uh, on her tree, actually. And so uh, that was, uh, that I was already there. But if you're starting from scratch, you basically put a box for yourself, enter, um, enter uh, where you were born, uh, when you were, uh, the year when you were born, um, and then start entering your family, your parents, and their uh, now, you know, your siblings, their grandparents, and so forth. Uh, the system actually is very helpful because it allows you to easily collaborate and it will tell you if what you're entering might have matched uh, as it would other people have entered. Uh, you can also out, sort of crowdsource some of the genealogy. So you can actually tag a profile with an email address and you can basically say to, to some kind of an uncle saying that, hey, uncle, uh, this is you. Uh, please enter the information that you know into this tree. And so you immediately start kind of collaborating with, with the family uh, on, the, on the genealogy project. Uh, uh, you know, in my case, I mean, uh, somebody entered me uh, and when, when I was entered, uh, I think there were 50 people in our family tree. Now there are probably several hundred people in our family tree. Uh, so it can really grow and it's pretty remarkable how far it can grow simply by coll this collaboration. Uh, there, there is an offline method. There, there is traditional software you can install on your desktop and do a much the same thing, except for collaboration. Um, then, uh, so the beauty of offline is, of course, the data is completely yours; it's never shared. Uh, what is done by Jimmy.com and other sites is that they typically make the information about deceased people uh, available to others. Uh, so if you enter somebody who is deceased, then other people can, uh, in the public can immediately find them. And I found that to, to be actually a positive. Uh, I don't feel like there's all that much to hide about, uh, about, about you know, say my grandparents who, who passed away, will the you know, information about them. No. But I think that it will help people uh, do this project, help, help, them, help people, other people on the internet some people who are actually my family members who find me, find my family tree and, and collaborate. Um, so information about uh, people who are alive is uh, by default blocked, but uh, people can contact you if they stumble upon your profile and, and, and collaborate. Uh, uh, this project has been incredibly helpful for me because uh, I, I was able to find information that was entered uh, by another researcher who I did not even know existed who lives in England and who is like uh, who is who is like the di very distantly related, but through this per this British uh, guy's effort, I know about a branch of my family who lived in in uh, in Poland in the 18th, in the 19th century, uh, and that was a big puzzle that I did not know about. Uh, so I feel like that there is a really a lot of value to doing this collaborative online investigation. Let me mention one last thing about entering information. So it is important to enter metadata. Um, namely, uh, how do you know a certain piece of information? Uh, especially if the information is a little uncertain. So uh, you might be uncertain as to, for example, when a certain person was born. And um, so if you're not sure, it's important to, know, to make a note of that for the following reason. When you go into the database portion of the project, uh, you, you'll frequently find be in a situation where there is a slight mismatch between what you have entered in the tree 
and what the online data shows. Uh, this could occur for a variety of reasons. Uh, it could be because somebody, I mean, the memories are not correct, or because you know, somebody was recorded based on their Jewish calendar and then like approximately mapped to the secular calendar. So the date of birth might mismatch a little bit. So if there is a, so if you're not 100% sure, um, ideally you will have somebody with birth certificate, but at the very least there will be a good memory. Uh, then uh, it's very important to be able to, to note that because you will see mismatches and this mismatch mean, could mean that there was another Uncle Moses who lived in 1905 uh, and you don't want them on your family tree because it's not, it's not your family tree. Uh, um, you know, it's like just like when you're assembling a puzzle, you don't want to try to put the wrong pieces on and hope for the best. It's really, uh, it's really going to, you know, break your story. Uh, so, uh, so, or it could be that the date is, is a little off uh, in 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 the kind of in, in, in your catalog, and it's it's probably the right the right month for Moses. Any questions that I can speak to at this moment? Yes, um, question on like what regions, what parts of the world are covered in some of these databases and are there one specialized for, you know, for example, Ukraine, Carpathians versus uh, North Americans who may have been uh, here for several generations and may be using that for a different purpose just to find Jewish family in the US? Yeah, Judy, uh, great question. So uh, Jewish Gen has a lot of the data for a variety of the diaspora community, but uh, Jewish data, Jewish gen doesn't have all. So, uh, so there's a lot of data that's still offline. Uh, so, uh, and, or there's simply not structured. I'll talk a little bit about Jewish gen uh, down the road, but uh, so, so Jewish gen is, should be your starting point. But once you kind of mine, mine out Jewish gen, then I have some tips as to how you find the more specific information for Carpathian or other places like that. So uh, interviewing family members. Uh, so, um, so very, very fun and very, very important. So, uh, you know, so it's certainly very, like, it's very important to kind of go with close family members and, and, and have uh, interview with them. You might also uh, be interviewing family members that are in remote branches of the tree. Uh, and so in that case, uh, you know, it's, it's gonna be like, it's very special because you might be connected to family members that you've never spoken to ever. And, uh, and it's kind of be, it's kind of be a, like a, a, a fun conversation where it's like, hello, my name is, you know, hello, my name is Sasha and you don't know me, but I'm like this and this. And I want to ask you about all this information about the family. So very fun conversations and very unique conversations. Um, and, uh, you know, very rewarding, you know, kind of, um, you know, it, it's, it's kind of like, you know, like when in biology, we, when we look at, you know, we look at, uh, you know, cats and we compare them to, to, to the tigers, right? So they're all related, but, you know, you have kind of tigers in your family, you have the lions in your family, and they're actually different species, but you're sort of all related. Uh, so it, it could, it could, Open up a whole list of, uh, about your family you did not know uh, in terms of like occupation, about uh, where they live. Uh, you know, get, you get a lot of really interesting nuggets. Uh, but my three tips for this would be to first of all record, uh, tape all your conversations uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, um, there also uh, prepare questions in advance. You don't want to be in a situation where like you just have like you ask, you know, was my uncle born in 1905? Yes or no? And then like, you're basically out of questions. Um, uh, so think about the questions you want to you want to do. Uh, and this is a good phase to do after you've built your own family tree, because when you build your own family tree, you start accumulating questions. And so, so I, personally, I created a to-do list of all this, all this stuff that I wanted to find out about my family. And of course, it's like a ne never ending to-do list. The more, the more, questions you answer, the more new questions you have. So, so, so prepare a list of questions. And then um, when you have the interview, you know, you, you are, you're basically doing research work. So you're, you have to come, you have to use questions that will 
be open-ended and will kind of open up vistas into your family history. So, uh, you know, so by open-ended questions, you might, you might ask questions like, you know, tell me about my uncle and like, how do you spend your, you know, your childhood together? What kind of stuff you like doing together? Uh, or tell me about the one episode where, uh, where, you know, you were together uh, and what kind of stuff you did or what, what did you do for what you know how did you make your living so open-ended yeah, i guess that's a bad answer that's a bad example because you know how do you how do you make your living is a is a, is a question that could be easily answered and it kind of an, ends the conversation so so you have to be very clever about the kind of questions that you ask uh, so that they hopefully lead to new uh the long answers it's particularly important when you talk to elderly family members because people will tell you that they'll be they will frequently tell you that they don't remember. But in reality, it's stuck in some attic of their brain that they have never, they have not asked it for the last 80 years. And you've, you need to find a way of getting to that attic together with uh, your aunt and aunt and grandmother and so forth. So, um, so you kind of, so you have to be very creative about these questions and find a way to that attic uh, because that attic has incredible stuff in it. So uh, let me uh, tell you a little bit about the uh, online databases. Uh, so there are a couple of sites which build themselves as, as the one-stop shops for uh, all genealogy research. And I think that they're certainly not one-stop shop, but they are sort of the Walmart of genealogy. Uh, they have a lot of the basic necessities, and then you have to go beyond that. <clears throat> so, uh, so the sites I'm talking about are myheritage.com, ancestry.com. Uh, so they actually have a tree builder, so they're a little bit like Genie. Um, uh, but they also have an incredible wealth of U.S. documents. Uh, doc so, for example, if you have a family member who immigrated uh, and crossed Ellis Island, uh, myancestry.com will probably have that person's Ellis Island record. Uh, they will see, they will have their naturalization record. They will have tickets, uh, they will have all kinds of other information, newspaper reports. Uh, so incredibly powerful source of information. And it's not only that person, but it's also their family history. So it will say this person was came from this town and uh, to Ellis Allen, and they came with additional family members. And they are, you know, they are, they, they are, they will sometimes say they're patronymic. And if they say it says their patronymic or you know the mother's name, then you can go another generation back uh, and and write down their names of their fathers and mothers. And then you can go to another to another, another source of data and try to locate them, for example, in Jewish community records. So it's an incredible puzzle uh, project of solving puzzles. Um, now I mentioned to you that I uh, that. I used, I have a fellowship, and so I used the fellowship to buy subscription to Ancestry.com, to JewishGen.org, and Genealogy.org.il. So these are major databases of uh, genealogy research. So if you want to get to those, uh, to these sites, um, some of them are, uh, all of them are freemium or paid. Uh, just talk to me and I'll provide you with the, with the access information to the site. So for a year, you can do uh, you know, basically access and mine these data sets. Uh, so, so Ancestry.com is basically very much all about immigration to the US, but also other information. Uh, they're not so much focused on the Jewish genealogy. Genie.com uh, has a lot of data because it's a free site. It's been vastly used by the Jewish community to record genealogy data. So, so uh, a lot of all kinds of famous figures, but also just ordinary people uh, are recorded in Genie.com, and you're almost surely going to find family members in Genie.com. Uh, now, Jewish Gen is a separate story, so that's kind of the uh, that's kind of the the Walmart for Jewish genealogy data. It has tremendous amount of information. I'll show you some examples in the next slide. Uh, Genealogy.org.il has the Israeli document. So if somebody did made Aliyah in, in 1905, uh, you 
can find them in the genealogy that or the you, you might be able to find them. Uh, none of these the none of these databases are quite complete, and they will never be, of course. And the last uh, uh, place to go to would be uh, uh, Facebook groups uh, and other groups, which I'll talk about a little bit more. Uh, so you will find them. Um, let me let me hold, let me wait. I'll tell you a little bit more about these groups in a, in a separate slide. So Jewish Gen. <clears throat> um, so Jewish Gen is um, is a very very uh, comprehensive archive. So they try to assemble archives from different Jewish communities and put them into one place. But they also have <clears throat> a couple of other things. They have uh, they have special interest groups that focus on particular region. And like Judy asked, if you're interested in a particular uh, part of the world, there is a special interest group that collects information about them. Sometimes the special interest groups actually know about offline records uh, that are often like PDFs that are not digitized or not easily accessible, even if they're digitized. And so you can reach out to people who are there who can tell you a little bit more about that community and also get, get you access to more names. Uh, just, you know, incredible. But you can also contact other researchers uh, so people can post uh, queries like, I'm looking for uh, such and such a person and here's the information I have. And sometimes you will find hits. Uh, so just as an example here, I entered uh, David Levin uh, in Jewish Gen and I found over 8,000 records, 8,000 matches. Uh, you can see here that some of the matches are from Vienna, some of them from Belarus. Uh, there are matches from people who are in Jewish Gen and so forth. So an incredible amount of data. So this was, I would say that this was my go-to place for reconstructing the family tree. Uh, but keep in mind that a lot of stuff is not available in Jewish Gen. So, uh, so for example, the, in my case, my, my grandfather had uh, six siblings, five siblings, and only one of them is recorded in Jewish Gen. Uh, I, I suppose the records for the rest of them were either lost or destroyed, uh, uh, but uh, that one opened uh, the door for another generation because I could see, um, you know, I could see, I, I found interesting details that I had no idea. I found the name of the mother and father for my grandparents, my great grandfather and my great grandmother. So, uh, so even one hit can really open the whole vista into your family history. So, um, uh, so this login to the site is uh, is going to be. I can provide you with full access to this website for Russian Jewish and additional sources. Um, so there is a tremendous amount of additional sources that you can. Uh, so I think a lot of people know about Yad Vashem, <clears throat> where you can find uh, names of victims of Hol Holocaust victims. There is a less known archive called the Arolinson Archives. So these are people. Uh, this this is an archive in Germany that try that records not only names of um, who were like memories of people, but also official records. So Nazi records, uh, post-war records, uh, like. People who were in displaced person camps. Uh, so, if you know, if you want to find out information about the Holocaust, these two places, the Yad Vashem and the Olson archives, are the go to places. For Soviet records, um, this is a, another source of data, particularly if you're Russian and Jewish. Um, there are many records. So, I, you know, I listed here uh, uh, four that are particularly important. That, that you know potentially you know, useful to me, but there are many many others. Um, so Pamets Naroda, mem you know, memory of the people, is a is a record of people who served in World War II uh, and uh, and died. Uh, and so you can see uh, their service records uh, if they were wounded, uh, which units were they serving with. Um, you can sometimes see the full uh, the information about. Um, medals, and so it's it's pretty remarkable uh, uh, to see that. Uh, uh, the 1418 Museum and Wiremill.org are quite also, also quite interesting. Wiremill.org, for example, is a record of uh, Russian World War One records. Uh, so, 
uh, you can so you could um, you can find uh, you know people who served in World War One. So that's that's a pretty rich and ancient record, an old record. And so you can you know it'll open up doors to the 19th century. Uh, last thing uh, is um, this openlist.wiki. So uh, openlist.wiki is a record of people who were persecuted by the KGB. And uh, probably most of us who were born in Russia have people who were either arrested or sometimes actually executed by the KGB, uh, tragically. Uh, it, the records are not complete, so the KGB archives are still very much uh, locked down. But there is some, there's, there, are, there are a few million people who are in those records, and uh, you, you might be able to find some information there. Uh, in the link down here, I, I've actually created a data catalog of known, uh, of catalog of genealogy catalogs and, and other resources. So it has like a couple of a couple dozen records uh, of, of additional catalogs that you can access. So there's there's a you know there's really a lot of uh, a lot of stuff to look at. Uh, perhaps not, not not as important as the stuff I listed here, but still additional information. None of these uh, the databases is complete. So you're really uh, doing a, a very, um, even with the online databases, they're not complete and so you're solving a big jigsaw puzzle here, you know, trying to mine them. So let me tell you now about uh, DNA. Uh, so DNA is really incredible. Why? Because there are people who is, nobody really knows, uh, or branches of the family that you, uh, that are truly lost. Uh, nobody knows, uh, nobody remembers. Uh, but uh, DNA is is alive and well, and it's, it's within it, all of us. Uh, so uh, you can actually find completely lost relatives through DNA. Uh, then there's, you know, the leading site for that would be probably Ancestry.com, 23andMe. I believe Ancestry.com has the largest uh, database. Uh, 23andMe is a little smaller. Uh, 23andMe is more famous for their health information, which is itself uh, very important. Uh, GED Match uh, is, a, is a kind of a collaborative project where people upload their databases and find matches. Hmm. Uh, so I had uh, an incredible breakthrough through G DNA research. So I, I discovered that actually just the next time over, the next town over from where I live, uh, I have a close family member that I did not know existed. And you know, we got together before the pandemic, and uh, I I've been able to give him a photograph that of of his uh, family members, and he had no photographs of them. And uh, I learned a tremendous deal about you know very close family members uh, I did not really know existed. So it's very powerful. Um, so I would say that there is a concern about putting your DNA information in any in new databases, even the ones that are proprietary, which are so. The, your privacy is protected. Of course, uh, the police, if they ever want to, they can subpoena these records and access them. And there have been cases where um, what happened was uh, the, uh, the police, uh, I think the FBI was able to track down uh, a murderer because one of their family members uh, uploaded their, their genetic information. So they uploaded the genetic information about themselves, but it matched somebody uh, remotely matched somebody in the FBI database. So it allowed the FBI to, to narrow down and to, to one suspect uh, their search. So there is a kind of a, you know, there's, there, there's definitely a con to, to uploading your data. That data could be accessed by, uh, by people like the FBI. They could subpoena those records. Um, but it's also, uh, also potentially very promising. So a couple of uh, tips. I mentioned uh, that databases are not complete, even though we are in a digital era, it's like Google that works 90% of the time, or more like 70% more like of the time, or even less, depending on the community. Uh, there's, there, the records become progressively less complete as you go uh, back in time. Uh, so uh, you could also look at hiring a professional researcher. But this is particularly important uh, when you want to Look, build a family tree for, um, and the archives are local and somewhere in Eastern Europe. Uh, so I, I have a family member who, who went out and did that and 
And this researcher was able to build a family tree going down to, into the 18th century by going to the local uh, town hall and you know going through those databases. Uh, they might have access to, the, you know, particularly this is important for, uh, for you know, this, this, this um, the, the person also might have local knowledge uh, that's sort of not, and access to archives that are not digital. Um, uh, focus groups that could be potentially very important. So there's there are groups on fa Facebook on, on Jewish Gen which uh, share lots of tips and information. And so not only can you learn about the general history of the community involved, um, you could also uh, collaborate and identify family members and, and share you know share insights and share sources that are otherwise not published in Jewish Gen and so forth. Uh, and, I, and this is what I mentioned. So for example. Uh, there is a uh, mitzvatnet.com. Uh, I think it's a Jew, it's a it's a Russian language site where people post pictures and they say, well, like you know, like, here's the, my family story. Do you know? Are you do anybody is related? Can you maybe f help translate it? Um, people also post links to other resources, so you kind of really learn a lot and help people uh, build their own family trees. There are other Facebook groups. <coughs> Uh, out there. So as a net blog, I, 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 found, I found that my own genealogy project is inc was incredibly fulfilling and I, I think that it will be very fulfilling for you to do this project as well. Um, I feel like I can create, I have a family story, like a story that I can share with my children uh, with, uh, and I also been able to actually connect my family together by, you know, they were based, they were my collaborators in this project, and we've learned about our family a lot more. Uh, we've really built this puzzle together. Uh, and I think that uh, I would like to wish you uh, success in your own genealogy journey, and also offer my help, uh, whether through access to online databases or any tips that I can share. So good luck. Great. I, I do have a question. So uh, based on all those subscription websites for DNA genealogy, which one do you recommend the most? Um, uh, let me just go back to that. Uh, so, yeah, so you must go to jewishgen.org because that's, that's where you have a lot of the Jewish diaspora data. Um, and it's, uh, 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 so that's, well, that's one place. But you should probably also want to go to ancestry.com because that's where you have a lot of the uh, general. Uh, it, it has um, uh, uh, yeah, it has all these U.S. records that are not available in Google again. So if somebody, if you have somebody who's kind of going through Ellis Island or so forth, uh, then you can find there only an answers to Um uh, This Gini.com is where probably where you want to build your tree because it's a it's a it's a site that's a, it's completely free and you can start collaborating and share it and it's it's free forever. So, so for the most yeah. accurate uh, DNA results, essentially to connect to our genealogical roots, uh, JewishGen.org and Ancestry.com essentially would be the top resource. So 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 DNA is different. So this is. So, uh, so these databases are just Google types. You, you, uh, you, you can, uh, you can in JewishGen.org, you just type in names and you get records. And so is Ancestry.com. Uh, 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 yeah, for DNA, so there, for DNA, there is a separate source. So, so the, I think the biggest one available for DNA records is Ancestry.com. So it's a separate functionality within Ancestry.com. And there's also 23 and me uh, that's second biggest. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you can also export your genial DNA data from these sites. So you could you could download the data and then you can in, you could uh, it was a little bit of pain. You I believe you could I have, I mean, I have not done this. You can then uh, take that data, this DNA data, and put it in a site like GED Match. And then you could uh, uh, match. So you, you your data is portable. 
Yeah, please, Batya. Hello? The, the data is portable from where? So you can take data from 23andMe and download it. Uh, and then How about can, from Ant Ancestry? I believe so too, uh, because it's a healthcare, it's considered a, I have not tried this, but I believe it's it's also portable. It's considered to be a healthcare record, and so they are required to allow you to download the record. Uh, because I did the Ancestry date, um, DNA, mm -hmm. and it came back 100% European Jewish. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, what kind of information is that? <laughs> yeah, but it did it give you additional family matches? Yes, lots of third and fourth cousins. So that's that's kind of what you expect, right? So that's okay. that's that's what the, the, the DNA matching that. Um, so okay, thank you, you. Were you able? To, were they any good? Like, were you able to reach out? No, to I I'm trying to find the name of my family in Russia because they changed their name. Um, and it's and it's just they keep I I contacted every third and fourth cousin, and nobody gets further back than 1900. So it's yeah. I'm going to try be, some of your resources. Yeah, you might be able to like uh, you should be able to do it. The, the records do exist, uh, but you might need to get like a local guide who can go to the town hall and find mm -hmm. out uh, what are the main changes. Do you have recommendations for that? Um, I have not done it, so I don't. I know I'm not sure if I can really uh, help. I, I, you know, maybe start here at this uh, at, at, uh, at this uh, mitzvatemet.com. Uh, there are some mm -hmm. people who are they're professionals who are there, and they can just say, "Oh, yeah, I can help you with uh, with this particular location." Thank you so much. Uh, uh, Sasha, so Judy uh, in the chat room, she wrote a question saying, how many hours per week did you spend on this project and for how long? <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh, uh, yeah, you know, the amount of you can dedicate to this project is, uh, is kind of almost inexhaustible, but, uh, but look, you know, it, it's worth uh, spending a couple of hours just uh, building your own known family tree like all the people you know and then uh the ones that uh, and then punching them into jewish agenda uh, that work so that's that's uh that's not a lot of sweat this is like this is a this is a sunday afternoon type of project uh, so building your basic tree and just punching in the the uh the you know people from europe into jewish agenda and seeing if you're finding any hits because you could type in the the, the name of the the name of the person, the town, uh, and then uh, and then you can discover, uh, voila, there is always like a little record of them. One final question for me. Sorry for dominating all the questions, but what is the best way to reach out to you regarding questions or uh, once we've uh, started yeah, our gene tree? Yeah, so um, this is my email address here, agoodfriend.research at gmail.com. Uh, so reach out to me. I'll, I'll give you the, the access to the genealogy, and I can, uh, I, you know, and I can help you also like build your actual trade. Um, so I, as as, a, as part of my fellowship, I I am committed to helping ten people build their genealogy. So let me help you. This is my email address. And I can Thank put you. my I could my I could my cell phone in the chat as well. If you want to just look on pick it on chat with me. <clears throat> so could you could you share with us one interesting thing that you learned doing your, your own tree that you didn't know before? Yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, there's where do I start? Um, yeah. the, um, so I, I spoke to a, a family member. Uh, you know, you, you wouldn't believe it. It was just like kind of incredible. Uh, I spoke to a family member who lives in Israel. Uh, I, I've never, I might, I might have met him once before in my life, and and he is like he's really he's like a, a nephew of my great grandmother. 
so like very a fairly distant member, family member. But he gave me a, like an incredible nugget. Uh, so he said that uh, he said that uh, his mother told him that she is related to an Israeli politician, and that Israeli politician is David Ben Gurion. So it's true. Um, so I I found his mother. So uh, I found his mother's cousin, uh, uh, who is also my great grandmother's cousin. And I found her immigration record in Ellis Island. Uh, <clears throat> her name was Pauline Mundus. And she moved, she moved to New York. And when David Ben Gurion was fundraising uh, in New York, they married. And, and so turns out that I'm distantly related to Ben Gurion. How about that, Carly? Amazing. Yeah, I never imagined, and it's like it's like it's like a family connection. Potentially, could become a prime minister in Israel, huh? <laughs> Anybody could become a prime minister in Israel. But uh, but you know, good luck. Really, uh, there is you know we are all related to incredibly interesting people, famous rabbis. Uh, you know, it's uh, because you know if you go back two hundred years, uh, that's approximately ten generations. It means that we are we are related to a, a thousand different people ten generations ago. We have a thousand different ancestors uh, ten generations ago. So out of those thousand different ancestors. Uh, Imagine how many descendants they have. Uh, and so we are all related to, in, to an incredible group of people. Uh, some of them had very tragic fates, like they were lost in the Holocaust. Some of them had incredibly heroic fate. Uh, and so this genealogy tree is, is, is a truly like a journey. And in the last 10 years, that journey just became incredibly uh, much more easy. What was impossible 20 years ago is possible now. So DNA through, uh, through this online database. Maybe this is a great note to start. So here's my email, uh, ping me and let me, let me help you build your tree. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you, Alex. Thanks for joining everybody.